The Mandalorians were some of the most feared beings in the galaxy. Over the millennia, their numbers included unstoppable conquerors, insurmountable warriors, and brilliant tacticians. But who was the greatest Mandalorian of all? Was it Mandalore the Ultimate, their most prolific conqueror? What about Jango Fett or Boba Fett? All three were certainly up there as far as great Mandalorians went, but Candorous Ordo overshadowed all of them. Candorous, or Mandalore the Preserver as he was later known, was a man of unrivaled badassery and in this video we'll be telling his story. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Candorous Ordo was a member of Clan Ordo, one of the oldest human-dominated Mandalorian clans. He was raised in the Mandalorian ways on his clan's homeworld, a desert planet in Mandalorian space named Ordo, and he came of age shortly after the end of the Great Sith War, 3996 years before the Battle of Yavin. At the time, the Mandalorians were in the middle of a massive cultural shift. After the defeat of the Mandalorian Crusades in the Great Sith War, Mandalore the Ultimate had reorganized the Mandalorians into the Neo Crusaders. The Neo Crusaders abandoned the nomadic ways of their predecessors in favor of acting as a conventional, highly organized military force, though they still held true to Mandalorian warrior traditions. They built up a mighty war machine and actively recruited from a variety of species, hoping to recover from the casualties sustained in the Great Sith War. In those, the Neo Crusaders had yet to challenge the Republic, instead focusing on conquering small worlds in the Outer Rim. During one such conquest, Candorus was tasked with leading the offensive as part of a rite of passage. He was just 13 at the time, the age at which younglings became adults in Mandalorian tradition. Despite his young age, he armored up, strapped himself onto a basilisk war droid, and dropped onto a target planet from orbit, the vanguard of the Mandalorian assault force falling behind him. It was young Candorus who fired the first shots of the battle, scattering the planet's defenders and destroying their main power generator. Candorus was held in high esteem by the other Mandalorians for the honor and skill he displayed in that battle. He rose quickly through the ranks of the Mandawada, becoming a legend among his clan for his skill with heavy weapons and basilisk war droids. Mandalore himself took notice of young Candorus whom he made a rally master in the Neo Crusader army, essentially equivalent to a commander. Candorus fought in many battles during the early years of the Mandalorian Wars, vanquishing the armies of countless remote Outer Rim worlds. After about a decade of service, Candorus finally got a chance to test himself against a more formidable foe, the Republic military. As the Mandalorian Wars escalated into a galactic scale conflict, Candorus fought on the front lines in some of the first battles against the Republic. In the first battle of Altair, Candorus's clever tactics allowed the Mandalorians to destroy an enemy fleet 10 times the size of their own. Following this, he became one of Clan Ordo's field marshals. He continued to annihilate enemy forces on world after world, bringing the Republic to its knees. By 3962 BBY, it seemed the Republic would soon fall. Unfortunately for the Mandalorians, however, it was around that time that Revan got involved. That year, a band of Jedi Knights led by Revan and Malak took command of the Republic military. Revan's tactical genius was unrivaled, and despite the best efforts of Candorus and his fellow Mandalorians, Revan was able to turn the tide of the war. By 3960 BBY, the Mandalorians were all but defeated just two years after they seemed poised to conquer the core worlds themselves. The last remnants of the Mandalorian fleet rallied at Malachor V for a final battle with Revan's forces. Candorus and the rest of Clan Ordo were among them. They fought well, but in the end, the Mandalorians lost that last battle. During the Battle of Malachor V, Mandalore the Ultimate was killed and most of the Mandalorians were wiped out. Those who survived had no choice but to unconditionally surrender to Revan and the Republic. Revan forced the Mandalorians to destroy their ships, their war droids, and their armor. He also took away the Mask of Mandalore, preventing them from choosing a new leader. Without the Mask, the Mandalorians, already dishonored and defeated, turned on each other, wasting what remained of their strength in a battle over leadership. 
Disgusted with what had become of his people, Kendris broke with Clan Ordo and the other Mandalorians, not wanting to take part in their vain squabbles. Stripped of his armor, his honor, and his clan, he wandered the galaxy, working as a mercenary and putting his combat skills to use for crime lords. Shortly after the Mandalorian Wars ended, a new war began, the Jedi Civil War. Revan and Malak had become Sith, and now they made war on the Republic, just as the Mandalorians had before them. But Kandorus didn't pay much attention to the fortunes of the greater galaxy, caring nothing for the Republic or the Sith. However, while Kandorus was working for the crime lord Davik on Taurus in 3956 BBY, he ended up getting dragged into the war anyway. By that point, Revan had supposedly been slain by the Jedi and Malak had taken command of the Sith. That year, Malak and the Sith blockaded Taurus, imposing a quarantine to prevent the inhabitants from leaving while they searched for the Jedi Knight Bastila Shen. During the quarantine, Kandorus became tired of working for Davik and developed a plan to steal Davik's ship, the Ibn Hawk, and run the blockade. To do this, he allied with none other than Bastila herself, as well as Republic veteran Karth Onassi and a few of Bastila's other comrades. Unbeknownst to Kandorus, one of Bastila's companions was Revan, whose personality had been wiped and replaced with the personality loyal to the Jedi. Together, Kandorus, Revan, Karth, and Bastila managed to steal the Ebon Hawk and escape Taurus. From there, they traveled to Dantooine so Revan could retrain as a Jedi, following which the crew of the Ebon Hawk set off on a vital quest for the Republic. Hoping to uncover the secrets of Malak's superweapon, the Starforge, the crew of the Ebon Hawk traveled across the galaxy looking for star maps, vital clues to the weapon's location. Along the way, Kandorus found a purpose in life again, fighting for a cause with meaning for the first time in years. Kandorus Ordo was one of the most devastating combatants on Revan's team, capable of matching even Sith apprentices in combat. No matter whether he was fighting with his iconic heavy repeating blaster or with vibro swords, he kicked ass everywhere he went. He became close allies with Revan and some of the other members of the Ebon Hawk crew, who valued the Mandalorian's skill enough to overlook his lust for combat. After Revan's true identity was revealed, Kandorus pledged his services to the former Dark Lord, believing Revan to be the greatest warrior in the galaxy and a man worth following. He fought alongside Revan to the very end of the Jedi Civil War. After the war's end, Revan's erased memories began to return. He remembered that there was a grave threat lurking beyond the Outer Rim, one he believed he had to go and fight. Before he left, Revan led Kandorus to the site where he had hidden the Mask of Mandalore. On the way, he told Kandorus a terrible truth he had learned after the Mandalorian Wars. Revan said the Mandalorians didn't invade the Republic space ten years ago because it was our choice. We were tricked. Our entire people sacrificed as pawns. I never knew it. He said there was a war coming, that it was waiting out in the unknown regions. In the dark, waiting for us to destroy each other. A war? This war? No, not this one. Another one. More terrible. Against an evil we couldn't begin to comprehend. A war of belief that had been fought for thousands of years. Revan gave Kendoris the Mask of Mandalore, anointing him the new leader of the Mandalorians. Kendoris took the name Mandalore the Preserver. Revan urged him to rebuild the armies of the Mandalorians and make them ready for the war that was to come, a war in which they would have to fight alongside the Republic to save the galaxy. Mandalore had his work cut out for him. The Mandalorians in those days were still scattered from their defeats a decade earlier. Many had abandoned the clans and become mercenaries or worse. But Mandalore wasn't one down to back down from a challenge. Beginning with Clan Ordo, he gathered the clans on Duxon, Onderon's Demon Moon, where they secretly rebuilt an old Mandalorian stronghold. After gathering what remained of the clans, Mandalore set out to bring other Mandalorians back into the fold, traveling to scum dens across the galaxy to give his fallen brethren a purpose again. Mandalore faced many leadership challenges during this period, but he overcame them all, slaying any who challenged his right to rule the Mandalorians. He quickly gained the admiration of his followers, who grew rapidly in number. Mandalore kept his forces hidden on Duxon, but eagerly awaited the day when they would go to war once more. 
and 3,951 BBY, as the Republic verged on collapse thanks to the work of the Sith Triumvirate, Mandalore met Mitra Surik, the Jedi exile, who came to Duxon aboard the Ebon Hawk. Surik was hunting down the last of the Jedi Masters, hoping they would help her stop the Sith, and asked Mandalore for assistance in finding Master Kavar, who was hiding out on Onderon. After Surik lended a helping hand to the Mandalorians on Duxon, Mandalore gave her a ride to Onderon. They were unsuccessful in recruiting Kavar due to the outbreak of a civil war on the planet, but Mandalore remained with Surik, opting again to join the crew of the Ebon Hawk. Mandalore accompanied Surik and her companions on their quest, recruiting several small bands of Mandalorians along the way. After Surik returned to Onderon, ended the civil war, and finally met with Kavar, Mandalore returned to his people, but only for a little while. After Surik gathered the Jedi Masters, Telos IV came under attack from Darth Nihilus and his fleet of ghost ships. Nihilus planned to consume all life on the planet to sustain his fearsome power, and the planet's defenders were unable to hold him off. Surik went to help defend Telos, and the Mandalorians followed her. Though he wasn't yet willing to reveal himself to the Republic, Mandalore covertly joined the Battle of Telos IV with a team of his best warriors. Together with Mitra Surik and former Sith assassin Visas Ma, Mandalore and his men stormed Nihilus' flagship, the Ravager, a ship that had been wrecked at Malachor V. While Mandalore's warriors planted charges to destroy the ship and held off Nihilus' troops, Mandalore, Surik, and Visas cut their way through to the Ravager's bridge. There, the three of them faced off against Darth Nihilus. Darth Nihilus was a Sith Lord of unfathomable power, but he was no match for Mitra Surik, Visas Ma, and Mandalore the Preserver. Surik carried a wound in the Force within her that weakened Nihilus as he tried to feed on it, while Visas had a Force bond with the Sith Lord that she was able to exploit. Mandalore didn't have any Jedi tricks up his sleeve, but he was still able to stand up to Nihilus and help make the Sith Lord look like a pushover. After Nihilus was slain, Mandalore returned to the Mandalorian shuttle, dragging his massive Beskar balls behind him, and gave the order to blow the Ravager to hell. Telos IV was saved, and unbeknownst to the Republic, Mandalore played a major role in its salvation. Mandalore returned to his people after that, continuing his quest to make them strong again. He ultimately died before the war Revan predicted came to pass, but the mask of Mandalore was taken up by a new warrior after him, and his people lived on. The Mandalorians reclaimed much of their former glory, and in the later wars, they battled the Sith on the side of the Republic, just as Revan hoped they would. They owed it all to Mandalore the Preserver, the warrior who brought them back from death, the greatest Mandalorian the galaxy had ever known. We would argue that Mandalore the Preserver single-handedly redefined the word badass. No one before or since ever came close to the sheer level of cool this absolute king attained. In all honesty, we should have featured him on our sister channel, The Braved. But what do you think? Are there other Mandalorians you think were greater than Kandorus? If so, feel free to be wrong in the comment section below. As always guys, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.